Hi, this is David, Two Stroke Performance. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to unbox one of our KTM and Husky TPI power kits. Uh, this particular video is uh, applicable to the 250 and the 300s. I decided to do them both together in the one video just because the, the kit is essentially the same. Uh, the, the only real difference being uh, the cylinder head that you receive, you know, it will be applicable to either a 250 or a 300. Um, so in order to purchase one of these power kits, uh, the way we do them at the moment is uh, you um, need to send us your stock ECU and we will reflash it with some updated maps and then we'll send it back to you boxed up like this with a few other bits and pieces. So first things first, you'll get a new spark plug. Uh, it'll be an eight heat range plug. This particular one is an NGK BPR8EIX Iridium plug. Uh, it's probably the closest match to the stock plug that's uh, easy to get. Um, there are other alternate um, options for the plug. Sometimes if we can't get stocks of these, you will find that you know the kit will contain a slightly different plug. It will always be an eight heat range though, and that's really important because as soon as you start to modify one of these 250s and 300s uh, and the combustion te temperatures go up and you generate a little bit more heat and more power, um, an eight heat range plug is definitely uh, the one that you want to uh, use. Um, no different to all the previous Carby bikes. I've been running eight heat range plugs on all the previous Carby bikes. As soon as you do even basic mods to them, uh, I've been running those eight, uh, number eight plugs for uh, a number of years uh, and haven't had any issues. Uh, the next thing you'll get is a, uh, a bolt and spring. This is a stainless bolt uh, with a little spring over the top, uh, which you can use to install into the throttle body. And that enables you to manually set the idle speed. Uh, I've done another video on that um, a while ago, which is on uh, YouTube. Um, so you can have a watch of that if you want. I won't explain it all now, but yeah, this, this bolt allows you to set the idle speed. Most bikes don't require you to fit that bolt but we'd include it anyway because it's simple and if you're one of the small number of bikes that does need a, a change to the idle speed after setting up this power kit then at least you've got it there and uh, you know it makes it a bit more convenient. Next thing we've got in the box uh, is an ECU so you know uh, when you buy one of these power kits you send us your stock ECU we, we reflash it we send you uh, back the same ECU you'll always get your own ECU back um, it'll have modified data on it. So uh, basically we change the fuel maps, the ignition maps and the oil maps. Um, these ECUs do have the ability to, to basically hold two, you know, I guess two running maps. So that is two sets of data for fuel and ignition. Uh, the oil um, map is the same whether you're in map one or two. The way that I choose to do them, map one is always the tuned map or the, I guess the crisp map. Uh, it's safe for, for normal types of riding, assuming you've got the appropriate compression ratio head for your elevation. Uh, it's safe for normal riding conditions or normal sort of racing conditions um, using normal uh, pump fuel. In Australia, um, we have 98 RON pump fuel. That's roughly the equivalent of 91 or 92 over in the USA and over in, uh, in other countries that use a, a different measure aside from RON. So that's essentially our, our highest grade of, of, uh, of regular pump fuel. Um, uh, so map one is, is designed to work with that. Map two, basically, you know, I take that map one and pull out a decent amount of ignition advance. So it's got less ignition advance. And I also add a decent amount of fuel. Um, so essentially map two, it does produce less power, but I more think of it as a safer map. So I'll always suggest for people to use map two if you're riding in deep sand or if you're doing prolonged, really high speed riding. So they're both situations where the engine can build up a lot of heat. So that's when you'd want to use MAP2 ideally, because um, it's, I guess it, it uh, reduces temperatures in the engine. It's a lot, uh, a lot safer and a lot softer on the engine. You can also, also use MAP2 in really technical situations. As I said, it will produce less power. Uh, so it, it can be used to minimize wheel spin and all the rest. Um, the oil maps that we use, they do, we do add more oil than stock. Um, so especially on the 2020 models for both the 250 and the 300, uh, they actually reduce the amount of oil that, that the stock maps have by quite a decent amount. So at low throttle, there's about 40% less oil than the 18 and 19 models. And then at wide open throttle, there's about 15% less oil than the 18 and 19 models. So. Um, just for safety's sake, we'd bump up, bump up that oil uh, amount um, back above what the 18 and 19 models have. Uh, at the end of the day, 
you know, as long as your combustion chamber is designed properly, the engine's going to burn pretty much all the oil that you, that you pump into it. Having more oil there usually equals more power and it certainly equals better reliability. So there's no downside to having more oil. Um, uh, so that's the, the ECU that you'll receive back. As I said, it, as I said, it will be your own ECU with, with modified data. Uh, you'll have a tune by TSP sticker on the, on the front of it. And on the back, there's a, a basic um, setup or instruction um, sheet which describes in basic terms the process of just quickly tuning the air screw because every bike does differ. Uh, it also lists some basic power valve specs. There's a note there about using MAP2 in sand or high speed riding just for safety. And then there's also just a list there of some things to check uh, on every TPI bike, just some things that, that we see commonly causing faults or issues. So just a, I guess a bit of advice there to double check all those on your bike when you're fitting this kit. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, one of our billet cylinder heads. So this is a 300 head here. Uh, it's a two-piece billet head, 100% designed and manufactured in Australia. Um, the two pieces separate, separate like that. There are O-rings between the two pieces that uh, seal the coolant. Um, these, these heads um, are available in different compression ratios. Um, so for the 250, we have medium compression and high compression. Um, so it's sticking with the 250 for, for a moment. For the 18 and 19 models, generally we advise the medium compression head. Because those 18 and 19 model 250s are, are quite soft off the bottom, they've got a very soft ignition curve, even just fitting the medium comp head makes a huge difference to power. Um, uh, and uh, over the over the years, or you know, over the last year and a half or so, selling these, we've sold far more of the medium comp heads. Um, so yeah, for the 18 and 19 models, generally for normal riding, we would suggest the medium comp. If you really want maximum bottom end and mid range, then we'd suggest the high comp. But the uh, for those earlier models, the medium comp is a bigger seller. For the 2020 models and onwards, uh, they are a better starting point off the showroom floor. They do have a, a I guess, a stronger ignition curve, especially. Um, the medium comp head on a 2020 model will definitely give an increase in, in power over the stock head. But if you're really looking for a, for a big boost to bottom end and mid range on a 2020 model, then we, we are selling more of the high comp heads um, for the 2020 250s. So for the 2020, it's probably roughly split 50-50 between medium and high compression, depending on the type of power that you're chasing. Um, uh, whereas the 18s and 19s, majority of bikes, we're doing the medium comp. There's a, a bit more of an explanation about the, 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 I guess, the type of power that each of those compression ratios delivers on the website. I suggest you have a look there. Um, you can always shoot us an email uh, because the different compression ratios do put different amounts of heat into the engine. Uh, and they also give a different spread of power from bottom end through to top end and over rev. So for the 300s, there are four different compression ratios. We've got low, medium, high and very high. <clears throat> Generally speaking, the, um, the times when you would use the low compression on a 300 would be for extreme enduro uh, or hard enduro. So really tight technical riding where you want the smoothest possible power delivery with no surprises. Uh, and, uh, and maximum overheating resistance. Uh, the low comp design is similar compression ratio to stock, but with a uh, better overall you know, combustion chamber shape. So it gives you that extra smoothness. It does give an increase in power um, compared to the stock head, even though the compression ratio hasn't changed significantly. Um, but yeah, it's super smooth and definitely suited to that uh, sort of hard enduro type riding. Uh, the medium compression design on the 300 is easily the most popular by mile. Um, it suits a really broad range of, of riding styles and conditions um, from tight technical stuff through to, you know, uh, faster, more wide open riding. Um, it's kind of the go-to design for, for most people, really safe with, with normal pump fuel. Um, doesn't get super tiring to ride, but it does give a, a big increase in, in especially bottom end and mid range, well, really big increase in power everywhere compared to stock. Um, but it's not going to rip your arms out. It's not too tiring to ride it. It's just a, a nice middle ground uh, and makes the 300s ride really, really well. Uh, the high comp design um, either suits someone at sea level who really wants quite punchy bottom end and mid-range power, or it suits someone who's living at 
you know, a moderate altitude, maybe a 1, thousand, fifteen hundred meters, something like that, who wants something just broad and smooth. So a, a step up from stock without being too punchy at high altitude. Um, <clears throat> the high comp design will work with normal uh, pump fuel at sea level. Um, uh, it is totally safe for that. We've, we've certainly sold plenty of them for people riding at sea level. And as I said, it, it gives that really punchy bottom end and mid range. It doesn't allow the bike to rev out quite as far. Um, but if you're only doing, you know, single track or that type of riding, it, you know, or maybe motocross, um, uh, it's still absolutely fine. And then finally, the very high comp design is is really designed for people living at quite high altitude. So 1,500 metres uh, and above uh, would be my suggestion. Um, uh, the, obviously, the um, uh, the higher up you go, the the you know the thinner the area, so the the more you need a, a high compression ratio to maintain decent bottom end and mid range power. So, you know, roughly, you know, I guess a simple way to explain it would be the, the very high compression design at around about 1,500 metres elevation is going to give similar power to the roughly the medium comp design or, you know, halfway between the medium and high comp design at sea level. Um, so that's a, a brief explanation on the compression ratios for the 300. In terms of the breakdown of models, for the 18 and 19 model 300s, we sell a lot of the low and the medium uh, comp heads. Um, and for the 2020 models, we are selling more of the medium comp. We still sell some of the low, uh, but we're selling more of the medium comp. Uh, the 2020 models are a better, I guess, starting point off the showroom floor in that they do have more bottom end, bottom end and mid-range power than the 18s and 19s. With the low, even with the low comp design on an 18 and 19, you're still getting a big step up in power. Um, with a low comp design on a 2020, you're really refining the power and making it a lot smoother. You still get an increase, but it's not as uh, pronounced. Um, but certainly by going to the medium comp head design or higher on any of the year models, you'll have a really noticeable um, increase in power. My suggestion is always um, pick the head that suits your elevation. So if you're around sea level, try and stick, you know, low or medium, maybe the high. Uh, don't use the very high comp design if you're living at sea level, it's just a, you know, using an overly high compression ratio when you don't need one um, really doesn't make for a nice riding bike. Uh, it makes for power that is like crazily punchy just off idle, but then goes really, really flat and doesn't want to rev out. So, um, yeah, so be sensible with, with the combustion chambers that you choose. Um, my preference is always a, you know, um, like a lower or a moderate compression ratio with a good ignition curve and good fueling, it makes for a much, much smoother bike and a much nicer riding experience. Um, uh, I see, you know, a lot of people trying to run overly high compression ratio heads, which generally vibrate a bit more and just don't rev out as, as far and aren't quite as nice to ride. So if you have any questions about which compression ratio to choose, uh, send us an email if necessary. Uh, in terms of performance and the reasons why you might fit uh, one of these kits, um, overall they, they definitely give you more power than stock. Uh, exactly where the power lies depends on the compression ratio that you choose. Um, generally you can ride a gear higher in a lot of situations, it'll make it easier to climb hills and lift the front over obstacles. Um, much smoother power delivery than stock, that's one of the main comments that we get all the time, people saying just how much smoother and nicer to ride the bike is, especially at part throttle. Um, uh, you get more oil, which is always good for reliability and uh, good for power as well. There's generally no downsides to, to having extra oil as long as you're running it with a good com uh, combustion chamber design. Um, there's, aside from initially setting the air screw, there's, there's not really any tuning required. You get the air screw set, you know, depending on your, your individual bike, and then you just ride it. You don't need to think about, you know, tweaking ignition curves or fuel curves or anything like that. We've sold hundreds of these kits. Um, yes, individual bikes do vary in terms of how they run, whether they're you know a bit richer, a bit lean. In almost all cases, you can account for that by some small changes to the air screw um, and the idle speed. Once they're set right, uh, and assuming there's no other mechanical faults, uh, the bikes just ride and they ride really nicely. Uh, we get a lot of people commenting on the, the smoothness and also just the fact that they, they can forget about what their bike's doing. They just ride it and enjoy it, which is great. Um, and uh, it's simple, simple to install. Um, obviously plug in the ECU, uh, screw in the spark plug, maybe fit the idle uh, bolt and spring, bolt on the head, uh, you know, in less than an hour maximum, uh, you're ready to go uh, and you're rolling. Uh, check out the website for more info. There's, there's um, dyno curves there. There's more of a write-up on the um, uh, compression ratios. Uh, and uh, flick us an email if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.